We are recording. Um, so I'd like to do uh, a bit on polymers. I'm not going to spend very long on this. Probably about 20 minutes. Because um, you've done polymers before. I should have done it in the uh, alkenes topic last year. So there's two types of polymers. Addition polymers and condensation polymers. The addition polymers are the ones that you should have done last year. So we'll just recap those quickly. Um, so for addition polymerization, and you cover this in GCSE as well, uh, briefly, we have to start with, with what? What do we need for addition polymerization? A bit louder, thanks. A long alkene chain. Oh, sorry, that was you. A long alkene chain. We don't need a long alkene chain. We, the polymer is the long chain. Just alkene. The alkene is the thing we need to start with. So if we have a, if we have a, an alkene of, of any sort, I'll just put an R group up there. Um, and then we react that with, well, there's various types of catalysts for polythene. It's called the ziegler natter catalyst, which is a mixture of triethyl aluminium and Titanium chloride, and we don't have to worry about that. Uh, it's just a catalyst and presumably some fairly sensitive uh, pressure, temperature um, uh, conditions, depending on what kind of catalyst, sorry, what kind of polymer we're making. And, you know, there's different forms of polythene, there's different forms of polystyrene and so on. Um, so the way, we, the way we draw our repeating unit is just to draw uh, the, the carbons, but now with that double bond broken. And uh, we just draw bonds extending either way. Uh, in GCSE, you were told to put brackets around it and the little N after it, weren't you? But I, I'm just going to leave it like that. That's the formula for the repeating unit, which is generally what they ask you for in... Uh, AQA exams, the repeating unit. So, for example, if I had styrene, as it used to be called, of course, we would now call it. No, that. What would we call that? Phenylethene, very nice. Phenylethene. Anything? Okay, but it used to be called styrene. So to make, obviously, to make polystyrene, that that uh, rather satisfying foamy plastic, which is uh, packed around big TVs and stereos and things. Um, nobody has a stereo anymore, do they? What do we call them? box you put in the corner of your kitchen. Boom box? I don't know. Whatever you call them. Um, okay, it's a very curious look. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember where I've got... Oh yeah, that's actually expanded polystyrene. They pump carbon dioxide gas through the, through the, uh, through the polymer as it's forming. It makes lots of bubbles and that makes, it, that, makes that sort of satisfyingly squeaky substance. Um, <coughs> so how would we write the repeating unit for that? Could you just... Um, just draw that in your in your book, thanks. Just draw the repeating unit for polystyrene, as it would be, or polyphenylethene, as we should probably call it. That's what they'll call it in the exam. Yeah, so we Yeah, so the, the trick here, that's great. The trick is not to get too distracted by the benzene ring. The benzene ring, after all, is just the R group 
that we've got up here. So if I just, if I you know, literally use the same kind of look and feel as I had for the previous example, and then I just squash my little benzene in there. Okay, that's, that's an easier way of drawing it rather than using that. There's, um, uh, there's a common, common question which uh, comes up in GCSE, which is when you have to polymerize that. Let's see if you can do as well. Can you draw the repeating unit for that? Which is, of course, protein. The repeating unit for protein. Hoodwinked into making the CH3 part of the part of the chain. The CH3 again, just like the benzene ring, is just a side chain hanging off the ethene. It doesn't participate in the polymer itself. It's just be let's just stick it up over there and, and so on. And we can have lots of different functional groups. You can have a uh, you can have a little ester group up there. Uh, that's um, polymethyl methacrylate. Uh, or you could have um, a chlorine that makes polyvinyl chloride, the stuff that we make vinyl out of. You know what we used to call records, and which we now call records. Yeah, weirdly, um, uh, and of course, it doesn't just have to be one hydrogen that's substituted. You could get. You can have all of them substituted if you want. You can have uh, tetrafluoroethene, and that would make poly tetrafluoroethene, which is the, um, the the kind of the black layer of non-sticky stuff they put on saucepans. And on all that's called. Also goes onto the uh, the surface of your uh, your Gore-Tex jackets, your, your waterproof jackets, because it, it repels things. It's not very sticky. Oh, no, the substance they put on saucepans. Maybe this word isn't used very much. You know, it's called Teflon. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes hear about about. Uh, Teflon leaders, you know, those, those people who make all kinds of decisions and then things go terribly wrong when nothing seems to stick to them. You know, those kind of people. Anyway. Uh, anyway. Um, all right, so that's addition polymers. I don't really want to talk about them anymore because, again, you did all that last year. Do you know what about them? Yeah, let's get rid of that. And instead, let's do condensation polymers. Which are a little bit different. Because whereas a addition polymer only needs one monomer <coughs> to make it, you know, all these, all these polymers we've, we've seen so far, we have lots of monomer molecules and then we polymerize them and then off they go into forming a big long chain. Um, for condensation polymers, we're going to have two monomers that are going to react together. So just to look at the reaction first, the condensation reaction, if I have, a, if I have an alcohol and an acid chloride, say, then They'll react together, happy with that. Condensation reaction. The condensation reaction is one where the two structures join together and lose a bit, so they become a bit condensed. I think that's where the word comes from. And we always lose a small molecule, usually water, but in this case, HCl. And then that attaches those two bits together. So we make that attachment. Yeah. 
uh, so in this case, uh, uh, an ester. But if I just do something fairly simple, which is to slip another functional group on the end of that molecule there, then, well, I'd have to extend that out. That would become another... Uh, let's just have it upright. That's better. That would then become another place where I could add another molecule of alcohol. So I could stick another alcohol on the end of there and I could have two esters. Yeah. So I've got the, the acid chloride bit in the middle and the alcohol bits joined on either end. So we've got a nice diester, which I'm guessing would be dimethyl propane dioate. I'm going to go with that. Sounds good. Um, but if I then did the same with the alcohol, right? If I put another OH group on the other end of the alcohol, so both groups now have two functional groups on, so then I'm going to have a, another alcohol here, but of course this alcohol could then react with another Uh, another uh, thing over there, and that, that could, but then can do the same down this end as well. Okay, and you can see what's going to happen. Yeah, and then we're going to have another end there, which can then react with another alcohol, and it's just going to keep on going. So again, as with the the alkenes, what we're interested in is the the least information that I can use to, to put across the polymer is that, that repeating unit. So let's just um, impose a bit of order. If I start with that oxygen on the end of the alcohol there, so that's kind of that end. So I've got the alcohol bit there, or the diol bit, and I've got the acid bit, or the acid chloride bit, and then that next oxygen there on the end of the the CH2 alcohol there is kind of that oxygen's the same as that oxygen. Can you see that? So actually, I don't need any of that. All I have to say is that that repeats. So that's our repeating unit. Okay. And, and of course, if I had if I had n of those and, and n of those, I'd also make two n lots of HCl as well. Yeah, for, for n molecules of, of alkyl diol and n molecules of dioyl chloride, we'd make twice as many HCLs because you get one in the middle and one at either end. Yeah. Um, so that's uh, that's a polyester. And unlike the, the addition polymers, the, the PVC and the, the polythene or polyethene and the um, polystyrene, which are all fairly familiar plastics, yeah, polythene, PVC, uh, polypropene, these are all plastics. Polypropene is used to make uh, things like yogurt pots. Polythene is used to make all sorts of plastic products, probably number of which you have on you or on your in your stationary set at the moment um, these are these are familiar plastic materials that we have polyesters are often used to make well what we're wearing you know, your shirts and your ties and jackets and so on because they make very good um, cloth you know, fabrics okay uh, the, the other one that we need to know then is uh, I could have a molecule of uh, well, of an amine. Uh, let's, uh, let's make it a bit different. So I'm going to have a, a molecule with six carbons and two amines on either end. What, what would that be called? Naming that six carbons. Warm, 
One six di diamino. We need the O in there. One six diamino hexane. Very good. Uh, what about this fella here? It's uh, it's again it's six carbons again, uh, but now we've got an acid chloride on each end. Go for it. <coughs> it's definitely not one, two, because the, the, the functional groups are on either end. But in fact, they, they, for this particular functional group, it has to be at the end of the molecule. So you can get away without using any numbers at all. Probably still need the other bit. Do you want to have another go? Mm -hmm. Dye has an E in it. Okay, lovely. Um, right, so what's the polymer going to look like? Well, remember that our nitrogen reacts with the acid chloride in just the same way as the alcohol does, except we're not going to make a polyester now. So the N, the N there, would still have one H on it. We'll make this new functional group. What's that functional group called? What's it called? A, a mide. Okay, that was an amine. This is an amide. Uh, so then I would just uh, copy the rest of that molecule there. Okay, I'm gonna gonna stop there because the chlorine goes off and makes HCl. And down this end, well, we'll still have our six carbons in a in a line. And we'll have an NH, but then the next thing there, after that nitrogen, I would attach to another of those carbons. So that's the end of our repeating unit. Um, so we could call this a polyamide, but it usually has another name. Remember, we're talking about synthetic fabrics here. Yeah. That is nylon. Um, nylons are usually named according to the groups of carbons, so this would be called nylon six six because it's got six lots of carbons in each uh, in each monomer. So. Uh, yeah, let's just um, let's just throw together some examples then. So let's have a <coughs> have a benzene ring. Why not? And just the same way that we have, uh, we can make esters out of acids and uh, acid chlorides and alcohols. We can make esters out of acids. And alcohol doesn't have to be an acid chloride, just need a bit of catalyst in there. Okay, so let's just have a go at those two. See if you can draw me a structure. 
structure for the repeating unit of those two polymers. One's a polyester and the other one's a nylon. So the chlorines go away with the spare hydrogen and form HCl. Okay. Same, same as in this example here. Uh, for, uh, for polyester, the first one, the, the little molecule produced will be water. You get two waters produced for every repeating unit. For these then, so for this one, when I'm drawing organic molecules, I really try not to move them around, transform them in different shapes, rotate them. I try and keep them in exactly the same orientation. But I, I don't think this is convenient here like that. So I'm going to sort of tip it up and go that way instead. So um, that oxygen to oxygen there is the, the limit of the, the diol, and then the diacid is just literally two carbons. There's nothing else there. And then on we go, repeating unit there. And this one here, so again, we've got the N. And I'm just going to repeat that as it is without changing it or thinking, oh, that's three CH2s, and then writing three CH2s, let's do as little changing as possible. But again, that, that benzene ring being that way around is, uh, is not convenient. So um, I'm gonna sort of put that at the bottom. Like that, okay. And then that, that would be that. Because we could lift it up a bit, couldn't we? So we have the angles correct, of course, because we all know that the bond angle there is 120 degrees. So that's yeah, that's nicer. Okay. Um, what what am I going to make dacron from? So I need two starting materials. There's a couple of options here because uh, you can either start off with an acid or you can start off with a acid chloride. Oh yeah, that's that, that's that one. So yeah, you haven't done the back one one yet. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. As long as as long as for it's the the, the pattern of substitution that's important. So for number one, the two the two alcohols are separated by. Um, by one carbon there, so in this one, um, so right next to each other on the ring, so all I need that substitution is kind of the same. And then for the dacron, you'll notice that the two carbons are opposite each other, so we have to keep that the same as well. Uh, and uh, the other bit. 
So I'm sort of slicing <coughs> my Dacron in half somewhere around there. Um, so here's my here's my acid. So again, I'm going to sort of keep that the same. So I've got an acid that side um, and an acid that side. Or, or if I wanted, I could go for an acid chloride. That would be fine too. And then on the other side, the dial. So all the examples we've seen for condensation polymerization so far have had, uh, we've had two different monomers, each of which has two functional groups on it. You've got to have two functional groups on the molecule. But you might want to think about the possibility of having a molecule with two different functional groups on it. So rather than have one molecule which is an amine and another molecule which is an acid, we can have one molecule with an amine at one end and an acid at the other and something else in the middle. And then, of course, we have an amino acid. So amino acids are molecules which contain all the equipment to polymerize themselves, amazingly, and we'll get onto that in the next topic. Oh.